Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com coming at you with 2020 Panini Absolute Football. Fat Pack, random division at number 11 from Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. We're going to chase Kaboom packs that we did five boxes yesterday, last night. We did not see, I did not pull any Kabooms, so maybe we'll find them in here. No vet commons ship, and everyone gets a random division. Big thanks to these folks for getting into it. There are the divisions right there. Let's roll it. Let's randomize names and divisions. Lucky seven times. Six and a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. We got Adam down to Bill. Six and a one. Seven times for the divisions. One, two, three, four, Five, six, and a seventh and final time. We've got the NFC North down to the NFC East. All right, Adam Copperman with the NFC North. Kat, you've got the AFC North. Gail with the NFC South. Colton with the AFC South. Catherine with the NFC West. Michael with the AFC West. Ron with the AFC East, and Bill with the NFC East. We'll sort this by column B, by division. All right, any trades? Usually there aren't very many trades in division, so we'll keep the window short. Cardboard King saying, start buying up. Wow. Dust off your Bradley Beals, folks, because he just dropped 60 points tonight. Woo. Nice. Richard just spot a spot, what, in the next Kaboom break? I appreciate that. We'll probably be able to get we'll get to that later tonight. We do have a late night tonight. Alright, maybe no? Alright, so no trades. Let's close it up. TWC trade window close. I don't know. Jason, when does uh when does the cup hockey usually release? Push back to around February if you heard Jason Jaspi in the background. Yeah, Alright, that makes sense. Maybe maybe some probably some COVID delays. So hopefully next month. Oh Ray, Randy invested in the wrong player. There's everyone right there. Randy said he had he was thinking about investing in Beal or Obre. Went with Obre. It happens. Sometimes people chase the wrong stocks. Some people get the right stocks. We just gotta keep playing though. Oh what what up again, Jack? It's like calling sex in value, Lonnie is saying is going up. <laughs> we'll try to get as much as we can, cardboard. But unfortunately, we'll, we'll ask for like, you know, we'll say, hey, we want 80, we want 100 cases of cup hockey. And then they're like, here's three. And we're like, oh. So, we're at the, at, at, the, uh, at the mercy of our distributors. All right, folks. Well, this is kind of a longer break, so we can talk more football in this football break. Guess what? I made some early picks. If you go to the break schedule page, this is also why the break schedule is important to keep track of. If you go to the break schedule page uh, and click Joe's Picks, the Joe's Picks tabs, then uh, you'll see what I have there. Richard. What what did you buy? I don't know what you bought. You tell me. You're the one that bought it. What did you get, sir? I can check after this break. But you should have an order confirmation that'll tell you exactly what you bought into. You mostly you mentioned you bought a kaboom or you bought into this, the kaboom chase. It's most likely you most likely bought into the next one. This is break 11. You're not in this one. I can guarantee you that. So you, you must be in the next one. Yeah. 
And I don't think we've got a few other breaks backed up, so that's probably not going to happen for another hour or so. At least. It's Donovan Peoples Jones. So we're basically looking for sort of the bigger rookie names in this. Are you, you're the king of buying into breaks that, that take forever to fill. What did you buy into? Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> there, yeah, there you go, Randy. Yeah, that means you're probably not buying enough. All right, so this Brady goes to the NFC South. Michael Pittman Jr. and that's a Justin Herbert. The Pittman Jr. goes to the AFC South. That'll be for Colton. And Justin Herbert goes to the AFC West. That's for Michael. There you go. Nice, Richard. Thank you. Green foil Tom Brady. Well, then it sounds like you bought, you probably bought all the spots in the next five boxer of this. There's Joe Burrow. So, yeah, you've got a ways to, we've got a ways to go though. We still have to finish this break, which is probably another 40 minutes in, of this break that we got to do. Then I think there's another break in between then. And then we'll get to, uh, I think we'll get to whatever your order is, unless something sold out before then. There's Joe Burrow, AFC North, Catherine, with that one. Uh-oh, oh no, Markel Fultz done for the season, torn ACL. Poor Markel Fultz. For a second, I thought he was going to be maybe... Buy low can it like a maybe like a Victor Oladipo type, which is kind of tough. That sucks. Here's Jalen Hurts, NFC East, Bill. Jason, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this, Jason. What do you think about the uh, Eagles putting in Nate Sudfeld at the end of that game? Got blown out of proportion? I don't think anyone's ever done that anymore. <laughs> it's true. So the Giants fans are mad, but it's like, you should have won more than six games. Should have won more than six games, that's true. I guess the thing that got me was like the players were so mad. Yeah, but then Jason, but then Jason Kelsey kind of threw it out there that I think in the moment they got it into it, but Peterson, I guess, warned them that it was going to happen. Oh, they, they told him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's true. I hear. I feel you. I feel you. There's Isaiah Coulter. Right. Yeah. When your boss says. Boss says, put it in Nate Sudfeld. And... Yeah, it probably was blown out of proportion. There's rugs right there. Yeah, someone else mentioned that, Joshua. Someone mentioned that, that Beal dropped 60, that, we're, that we should all dust off our Bradley Beal rookie cards. Car I think it was Cardboard King. Cardboard saying, start buying Sabonis. He's the real deal. That's what I love about basketball. There's there there's a lot of buy low opportunities out there. And all it takes is, you know, a handful of good games 
and some playing time. All of a sudden, your value starts to skyrocket. There's two Atongo Vailoa going to Ron Holland in the AFC East. We're getting some of the quarterbacks here, but we need to see a kaboom. Jason, have you seen a kaboom in these things? Uh-huh. Like, like, Whoa. Like, Alright. No, yeah. We're sure they're in here. <laughs> Yeah, these retail stuff is, is pretty difficult to... I mean, when you're buying hobby cases, folks, like you can certainly expect to see kabooms, but in these retail packs, yeah, who knows? All right, so I put in some early picks. As you see in the break schedule on the Joe's Picks tabs, for entertainment purposes only. We have seeding. I have seeds in there, too. Um, we got Indianapolis at Buffalo. Yeah, hopefully there's a kaboom for you at least, Richard. Let's not say wasted. That's that's all. That's already putting a negative spin on it. Let's let's call it invested first. Um, I went Indianapolis. Indianapolis Colts plus six and a half at Buffalo. I went there. I think that line's pretty much the same now. I don't think that's moved. Very much. I got Rams. This is all Saturday games. Rams at Seahawks. I, I think I took mostly dogs. I th Rams plus four and a half at Seattle. I think that number is relatively the same. Maybe the maybe that hook is gone on that Rams game. I got Washington plus seven and a half. I think it's Washington plus eight now. Just small one unit plays right here. I may add some more. I probably will add some more on one side or the other if the number moves in a nice direction. I'm going with the home dog, Tennessee plus three and a half on Sunday. That's a Sunday early game. I'm going the only, the two favorites I took were New Orleans and Nolens and the Berg Pittsburgh. So I laid the minus nine and a half with New Orleans. I put a couple units on that. And now I think that's lines up to. I wanted to get it get. On that before it went to double digits. I think it's at minus like 10 and a half now. There's Cam Akers. And then I went Pittsburgh, laid the minus three and a half. And I think they're now minus six following the news of of uh, Stefanski uh, landing, landing on the COVID list. Either having it or being in close contact with someone who had it. Um, which, moved that, which moved that line. So I was happy I got in at three and a half before it went to like six, six and a half. So as long as I'm kind of on the right-ish side of the number, feel pretty good about that. May may invest a little bit more. Um, may invest a little bit more uh, later in the week. Here's another Tua for Ron in the AFC East. Yeah, Washington, I wish... Washington's at plus seven and a half, and now it's moved to plus eight, which is the not the right side of the number. I was hoping it'd go down to like plus seven. But even at plus eight, I think it's going to be a lot closer. I think it's going to be a lot closer than Tampa Bay fans want want that game to be. Who's J.K. Dobbins? Ben DiNucci. There's Tom Brady. See, Tom Brady, if they if they can attack Tom Brady with Chase Young and Montez Sweat can can pressure him a little bit. That throws him off his game. I 
I'm pretty sure Tampa Bay is going to win that game. But I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a close one. And especially if if Alex Smith is playing, I feel I feel pretty good about him being able to to play a a solid game. You feel like you uh, you favor Washington? Juan is saying ever since they won you big money when you had the money line on them against the Steelers. I think I took the points with Washington that game. I mean, this guy right here. You know, like, the thing is, you, you want to try to, you got to have a game wrecker if you want to be, if you want to make the upset, right? So the game wrecker, the Chase Young could be it. What if he, you know, strip sack Tom Brady at a key point of the game? Scoop and score a touchdown. That could happen. Force him to make, make a bad throw. Turns into an interception. You know, then maybe you get him in a position where, where you 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 know that he's going to throw more often because maybe they're down by a touchdown. You know, so now now you know what what to expect more often. So the guy like Chase Young can really change the scheme of a game. There's Jalen Hurts, NFC East, Bill. Cardboard King decided to share a Zion take. He's saying that Zion and Williamson will will come nowhere near reaching LeBron James's legacy. Who's saying he is? I guess that's my first question. Is there anyone saying that he's going to reach LeBron James' legacy? Who's saying that? If that's the case, that's I agree with you. That's crazy talk. I don't think. I mean. Not, no one, no one I know. My sports fan friends, I don't think anyone's mistaking him for uh, Zion for. Uh, for a transcendental, transcendent player like LeBron James. Yeah, it's hard not to lie. I agree with you, Juan. Juan's saying Chase Young's going to be one of those players that everyone loves, regardless of what team you you support. I kind of agree with that. I, f I mean, may maybe outside of the NFC East, but I feel like he's a seems to be a pretty good dude. He's fun to watch. There's Justin Herbert. for the AFC West. Oh, the card market is RPAs are selling for 80K. Is the card market suggesting that? What are, what are LeBron rookies going for right now? I think if you compare it to LeBron rookies, then it clearly says... No one thinks he's going to be LeBron. So anyway, so those, those those are those are those are my picks. I don't think it's too crazy. I don't think they're too crazy yet. Well, I guess we'll we'll find out soon enough. I'll be here on Saturday breaking with you guys, so we'll find out soon enough what happens to my picks. Whether whether I. Uh, Whether I'll be, you know, throwing dollar bills into the air or whether I'll be crying and eating parsnip soup for the rest of the weekend. You're not a basketball guy, but, but why the Zion negativity? Didn't the season just start? Yeah, why the Zion negativity? I think, I think people just, I think a lot of people think that his cards are too, that he's too overpriced. But I think everyone's fine with Zion the person, right? I think he's pretty non-controversial. He doesn't really 
get on social media and go crazy. Seems like he plays hard. He's got a fun game. He's fun to watch. Powerful dunks. Good highlight reel. You know? But maybe people just don't like that, I guess? That he's being anointed or is so popular without really quote unquote doing anything? He hasn't had a chance to really do anything. Yeah, no, no PED scandal yet. <laughs> no, you look at Zion's body type. He's clearly not taking PEDs. <laughs> he's yeah, he, he's just a big kid. Yeah. Has Zion ever played a full season without an injury? Zion hasn't even played a full season, Patricia Birch. So it's hard to say. I mean, I guess you just have to look at high school, four years of high school, and and then college. I don't know if that sample size is enough. And ironically, yeah, Jason Jassy was just saying John Morant's the one that's injured now, not Zion. Yeah, so is John Morant like, is he now injury prone? I think so. An calf, ankle, something like that for John. Tua, AFC East, right. Do I think Kirk Cousins is overrated, even though he's been with Minnesota's offense coordinators? Um, I've always liked Kirk Cousins. There he is right here. You know, I think he's a pretty serviceable, more than serviceable quarterback. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what he could, could do if he was in like a Sean McVay offense. You know, if... That'd be, that'd be interesting to see. That's why football is so interesting. It's like... You never know. Is he? Does he suck, or does he suck because of the system? <laughs> that yeah, you have to you have to look at your phone, Jeremy, seeing why maybe the space bar doesn't work on your phone. <laughs> Yeah, for me, for Zion, I mean, I mean, I mean, I really don't, I really don't have really one one big opinion or another on him. I I hope for the hobby, I hope he, you know, he's only like what 19, 20 years old. I hope he'll trim down and evolve. You know, it it actually takes much longer than you think for these basketball players to really grow into like their man bodies. Like, look at how skinny Kevin Durant was. Well, Kevin Durant's still skinny, but look at how skinny he was when he joined the league and was going off, and he actually got better. That's the crazy thing. He got better. <laughs> so why... But but maybe he didn't really get better, you know, if, but it took him like five, or four, five, six years maybe. Not in, Maybe not until he went to the Warriors did you really start seeing him become that. Joe Burrow, AFC North, Catherine. We do personals, Michael, on Instagram Live, at Jaspies Breaks. They're on, on a dinner break right now, but they'll be back online another uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. So you can uh, go to at Jaspies Breaks on, our, on Instagram. I'm rooting for Zion. But I don't think anyone's, well, maybe the maybe because of the price point, but but I don't I don't think anyone who watches basketball is uh 
thinking that he's going to be a, a LeBron James. There you go. Yeah, it looks like it's working out, Jeremy Shaq. Yeah, Lonnie, I agree. I think he, I think he's going to be more more of a more of a Barkley type. I don't think he really has Zion's game at all. He's a different kind of game that could be very effective for the NBA. Jalen Hurts, NFC East, Bill, with that one. Justin Jefferson had an excellent season, breaking, I think, Randy Moss's rookie yards record, receptions record, both. That's NFC North. That'll be for Adam Kupperman. I'm sure there may have been some other Justin Jeffersons I missed. Adam, all of those rookies definitely will ship. And there's another Justin Herbert for the AFC West. Michael M. with that one. DeAndre Swift. Two more to go. So some of you remember, may remember my uh, my crazy NFL dogs to win the division. I only took long shots. It was a little uh, little project of mine. I only, I only took long shots on these future division winners. All of them lost. <laughs> the closest I got <clears throat> was the New York Football Giants. I had the New York Football Giants plus a thousand. I should have just taken the the Washington Redskins at plus fourteen hundred when I got that in early September, but I got them at plus a thousand. But my handicap was completely wrong. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote in there because Daniel Jones, Saquon, and Ever Ingram will just go off. None of them went really went off. Saquon got injured early on. He was out for the season. They were just kind of mathematically in it. They played a. I feel like they played played a pretty tough, pretty good season though, all things considered. I think they 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 were pretty. They played pretty competitive football week to week. But now I'm thinking, man, what if they did have a healthy Saquon Barkley for the entire season? Could that have been the difference? A couple game, couple wins here and there. Maybe the Giants are a little bit closer than we think. I feel like we're, I'm always waiting for that Evan Ingram breakout season. It hasn't really happened yet. I feel like he has so many great moments. You know, and, and he's just so, like, athletically gifted. And then sometimes you see him make an amazing play. It's like one of those guys, right? Where, where he'll make like an amazing play, some acrobatic catch and, you know, a step and run and cuts. And then all of a sudden he's like 40 yards down, down the field, right? And then like the simplest catch, the simplest pass, and he's wide open. And it just slips right through his hands. I feel like everyone's been saying, in like especially in fantasy football, he's close. This is it. This is the year. This is the year where he where he breaks out. Dust off your Evan Ingram rookies. There's green foil Jalen Hurts for the NFC East. Bill. There's 
an introduction to insert Justin Herbert. AFC West getting the Clyde Edwards E. Lair. That's for Michael M. Did I hear some, uh, I think it was just like some broad Twitter rumors or maybe, maybe, maybe Twitter dreamers who were saying that maybe Deshaun Watson gets traded or like he's disgruntled, I guess is the rumor. I don't know. I don't know what's happening there, but he just, he just signed a big contract. I'm not sure if he's going anywhere unless he demands a trade, I guess. He feels as if the organization is not doing... What they need to do, save those Mahomes and Brady's. Maybe it was, oh, oh, I think I know. I think I kind of remember what it was. I think like pro football focus or somebody was like, was like Deshaun Watson is like the, is a top five rated quarterback, but he's the only one not in the playoffs or something like that. I like Deshaun Watson a lot. I'm, can you imagine Deshaun Watson on the Raiders? I would love that. Yeah, I can't believe they... Well, I can't believe they traded Hopkins as well, Lonnie. I think... That ultimately led to, and bad results ultimately led to Bill O'Brien getting let go, relieved of his duties. Maybe that's the curse, Jeremy Shack. Evan Ingram didn't sign his cards, so now he's he's cursed to never, never play well. Sign your cards, athletes. Don't get the don't get the redemption curse. It's like the Madden curse. Get well soon, Joe Burrow, AFC North, Catherine. Chase Claypool. Hang on to your Chase Claypools. This goes to Catherine, the AFC North. If he goes off during the playoffs, that would be that would be a hashtag good for the hobby. There's a green Joe Burrow right there for the AFC North. Another one for Catherine. Mahomes for Michael and the AFC. West, Tom Brady's all going to Gale in the NFC South, including the ones I may have missed. Watkins. All right, last box coming up. Are we all just assuming, everybody, that that Trevor Lawrence is going to go to the Jaguars, number one overall pick? That seems to be a foregone conclusion, right? 
I feel like that fan base would riot if, <laughs> if they were if they passed on uh, on Trevor Lawrence. But then you hear that stat, right? How many number one overall quarterbacks? How many have gone to and or won a Super Bowl? I think not many. I mean, maybe that's an unfair stat because if a team is picking number one overall, <laughs> there's a reason why they're picking number one overall. Is there a bad team? Maybe they were just a poorly run organization, so they just never made the made the most of their QBs, maybe ruined them. Maybe these teams are just picking the, the wrong QBs to lead them. I personally don't, I, I wouldn't want the number one overall pick. I feel like there's a lot of pressure in that number one overall pick. Not only for the player, but for the organization as well. All right, final box. Good luck, everybody. I can't believe we have not seen Color Blast yet. That's something that we... Definitely, there are Color Blasts in here. Right? Or Kabooms, I mean. On average, non-base cards are included approximately five in every pack. Yeah, Kaboom's on here. Introductions, Fantasy Flashbacks, Unsung Hero, Stargazing, Red Zone, and Kaboom. Guess they're just that rare. So if you get a Kaboom card of the right of the right rookie, right? Like one of the big quarterbacks, it must go for like a million dollars. At least two million dollars. There's a two a tungle by Loam for the AFC East. Board dust on there. Uh, Ron Hollins with the AFC East. And a green to a Tungle Vailoa. And a Gabriel Davis to 35. Buffalo Bills. AFC East. Buffalo! So Joshua is saying odds are one out of 430 packs for retail for Kaboom 
cards on blasters, but not sure about fat packs. I haven't seen one in over seven cases of retail. Yeah, we. And we saw we've seen we're seeing a lot of the unsung heroes, the red zones. I mean, since these are basically hanger packs, I can't imagine. My guess is that we're, we're not gonna. It's not gonna be too common. That's just part of the chase. But that being said, I feel like we've opened up a lot of this. Right? I feel like we should should see some <laughs> something. One maybe. At this point, I'm not even. At this point, I'm not even asking for like a. A Justin Herbert kaboom. I just want to see. I just want to see a kaboom. Could be anybody. Don't care. Could be Darrington Evans. You know, it could be could be Damon Arnett. At this point, I just want to see one now. I mean, we are racking up. You know, these, these all definitely have value. The Jalen Hurts's and the Justin Herberts and Tua's and Joe Burrow's, all those rookie cards. They do have some value, especially if they grade out really nicely. You know, and there's there seems to be enough where I think some of them had some edge issues, but I think there's there's enough being pulled where you might find one that's that'll be worth grading. Wait, so Joshua, you're saying roughly one in 54 blaster boxes or blaster packs? And one in every 215 packs? Huh. That's wild. James Proch. Oh, one in every 215 packs for the fat packs, but one in every 54 bo blaster boxes. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's not easy, folks. Not supposed to be easy, I guess. But they are, they apparently, they're a little more common in more expensive hobby boxes. It's Justin Herbert. Yeah, I don't, unless, no, it's just T. Higgins. Brian Edwards and Tommy Stevens. And there's the Justin Herbert at the end for the AFC West. Well, that's it. A, a lot of nice Herberts and Burrows and a lot of nice rookie cards, but no kabooms, ladies and gentlemen. And we did get some nice stuff here. But the elusive kaboom remains to be seen where that is. Maybe in some future breaks. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was a five box random division number 11, 2020 Panini Absolute Football Fat Pack Retail Edition. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. For the next one, I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Bye-bye.